Now, until now, there's been no cure, and those afflicted are guaranteed a slow and very painful death. But today, scientists have announced that they've made a step toward finding a treatment for Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, CJD. And it's a treatment that could also help in conditions like Alzheimer's. Potentially good news all round from our health and social care correspondent, Victoria MacDonald, who has this exclusive report. When Annie Beattie was diagnosed with a form of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, or CJD, she knew, her whole family knew, that it was a death sentence. We had to plan for the fact that Annie wouldn't be with us for that long. The problem was we didn't know how long. Uh, it was, uh, in, in a way, rather a, rather a horrible part of it that it dragged on for probably three years longer than we'd hoped for because she ended up in a nursing home. She became basically in a ve fully vegetative state. Uh, that's just no way for anybody to end their life. They knew too, her husband now says, there wouldn't be a cure in time for Annie. But for the first time, there is some hope for future sufferers. Of course, what everybody wants is a cure or a treatment for all forms of CJD. And for the first time, the team at the Prion unit are talking about being very close. And scientists don't usually use that sort of language. At this Medical Research Council centenary lecture, it was announced to families affected by CJD that an antibody test has been developed, which can block the prion infection that causes Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. These antibodies are highly potent at treating the disease in animals. Uh, we've now made a human form of this antibody uh, ready for clinical trials in humans. And it could be a breakthrough not just for CJD but for other neurological diseases including Alzheimer's. At the same time trials on a blood test for VCJD once known as mad cow disease have also passed a significant hurdle. In 5,000 samples from the American Red Cross there were no false positives that is saying the disease was there when it wasn't. I think the next stage now is, is to do the large study on UK samples and try and get a snapshot of how many people might be infected. If that demonstrates that there are significant numbers of positive in the UK, UK samples as compared to the United States samples, uh, then that demonstrates two things. One is that the test works at detecting carriers, healthy carriers, and secondly that there is a problem there that's going to need to be solved. 176 people have so far died from VCJD in the UK, but last year the Health Protection Agency quietly announced that one in 2,000 people may be silently carrying the disease, twice as many as previously thought. Nobody knows if they'll go on to develop it, but Professor Collins believes this only adds to the urgency in developing the test and finding a treatment.